Hello everyone and welcome to the Kiki London YouTube channel. My name's Amanda and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how I prep the natural now ready for gel polish application and then we're going to finish off applying a simple gel polish set. So I hope you all enjoy it watching. I'm working on my own nails and the nails and skin here do look quite dry because I'd soaked off my acrylics using acetone earlier on in the day and because I knew I was doing this video in the evening I didn't use any cuticle oil or anything like that on them so they are in desperate need of some TLC. To begin with I'm going to take one of the Kiki London alcohol pads and just cleanse the surface of the nail. If you were working on a client you would come in and sanitize here but because I'm working on myself I'm just going to come in with that alcohol pad. Now a couple of my nails are slightly longer than the others so rather than spending too long filing them I'm going to take some nail clippers and trim down that length slightly. I don't want to take too much off but I want the nails to all be a uniform length. And then we're ready to move on to our prep. Now to begin with the prep, I'm going to be using the double-ended cuticle pusher from Kiki London. I absolutely love this scraper end of the cuticle pusher because it really gets down into those sidewalls and helps lift up any stubborn cuticle. But I like to start off using the cuticle pusher. You will see that I flick between the two. And that's because if I find a stubborn bit, I will come in with a scraper end and then I might switch back to the pusher. But I like to start off with the pusher because this lifts up a lot of that excess dead cuticle from the nail plate. I find that it's quite sharp, so it really scrapes it off without you having to apply hardly any pressure. So I'm being really gentle here. It looks slightly more vigorous than what it is because the video is sped up a little bit. But I'm keeping that cuticle pusher parallel to my natural nail and I'm just gently scraping off all of that cuticle. It's really important that you remove all of this excess cuticle from the nail plate. Otherwise, it's just going to cause your gel polish to lift. Now, from looking at my nails, it didn't even look like I had that much cuticle to remove because it can be quite hard to see. But this scrapes it off so easily that it took me hardly any time. But I do like to be really thorough with my prep. Now you can see here, I'm using my thumb to pull back that skin at the sidewall. And this is so that I can expose as much of that nail plate as possible and to really get down into those grooves and sidewalls because this will help you remove the cuticle that's there. Now this is quite tricky when you're doing your own nails. And therefore, I kind of find it like if you're able to master prep on yourself, you'll 100% be able to do it on a client. Because on a client, when you're working, you've got both of your hands, you've got all of your fingers. You're able to hold their finger underneath and pull back the skin so you can get right down into those side walls. Now that I'm happy I've removed all of that cuticle from the nail plate, I'm going to take another one of those alcohol pads and wrap it around my finger. And this way I can really get down into the side walls and around the cuticle area just to make sure I really clean all of that cuticle that I've lifted up away. And it also is a good opportunity to check to see if there's any areas you've missed. I'm then going to come in with my cuticle nippers and nip away any of those stubborn cuticle bits. So you'll sometimes find that your cuticle pusher scrapes and lifts up your excess cuticle but doesn't always remove it fully. And this is where I like to come in and just nip off those pieces. I'm only nipping off the dead dried cuticle. I'm not nipping off any of the living tissue. And I'm being really, really careful because obviously these are quite sharp. So you can end up cutting or hurting yourself. So be super careful when you're doing this step. I don't tend to nip too much with my cuticle nippers, to be honest, because I don't find that I have too much excess cuticle to remove. I probably where I do my nails quite often and I do use cuticle oil daily. I'm then going to come in with the 180 grit side of my Kiki London file and file the free edge into shape. So I just want to neaten the free edge up a little bit. We want to make sure we've got a nice crisp shape before applying our gel polish. And I want it to go for a slightly tapered square shape. So I'm bringing in the sides of the nail as well. So I'm making sure that the free edge is nice and crisp and that those side walls just taper in slightly. 
When I'm filing the natural now, I'm just going to go in one direction with my file. So I'm not going in a seesaw in motion. I'm keeping it all in that one direction. And you will find that when you're working on the natural now, you only need to use the 180 grit side of the file. The 100 grit side is way too coarse for your natural nail plate. You'll more use this to file builder gels or to remove your gel polish. So just stick to the 180 grit when you're working on the natural nail. I personally like to file and then dust away the dust just using my fingers or you can use a nail brush. And then I like to check the nails from all angles to make sure I'm happy with that shape. Especially if you're working on a client, the way that their hand is facing you, the shape could look perfect. But then from their angle, it might not look straight. It might not look very crisp. So always flip the hand around and check what the shape looks like from their point of view, just to make sure that they're happy with it and you're happy with it as well. I personally found it so awkward filing my own nails on camera. So I'm sorry if it's not the best. And I also just wanted to say here, I've not shown doing much on my thumb because that was quite awkward to film. But everything that I've done on the fingers, I've done off camera on the thumb as well. Now that I'm happy with the shape and I've checked them from both angles to make sure they all look as crisp as I can get them, I'm then going to come in and use my Kiki London buffer. So again, the buffer has a 100 grit side and a 180 grit side. The 180 grit side is this side with the writing. And I'm going to use the 180 grit side just to remove that shine from my natural nails. Now, some people prefer to do this with a file. If I'm doing a gel polish set, I prefer to use my buffer. I find it does the job and there's no need to go in with anything harsher but I'm just simply going over the surface of that nail getting right around those sidewalls and cuticle area just to make sure that that shine has been fully removed as then your gel polish has a bit of a rough surface to adhere to so we're not buffing these to get them shiny we're simply removing that shine so we're not going over them too many times just once or twice is enough to etch the nail plate. I did also just come in there with my cuticle nippers as I noticed I had a little hang now and I just wanted to get that bit of dead skin off. I'm then going to come in with a nail brush just dusted off all of that dust to make sure the nail plate was clean but to be really far up I'm going to come in with another one of those alcohol pads. So I'm using this to clean off all of the dust from filing and buffing and then I'm also using it to dehydrate that natural nail plate already for our primer. So dehydrating just make sure that there's no moisture or oils on the surface of the skin. I'm then going to come in with the Kiki London Primer and the purpose of the primer is to prepare your natural nails ready for the gel polish application. The primer will neutralize the pH balance in your nail and this will just make your gel polish last. It will help it adhere to the natural nail plate without any problems. So I just apply a really thin layer of this to all of the nails. You really don't need a lot of this. A little bit goes a long way. I'm making sure that I get right around that cuticle area, but be careful that you don't get this on the skin or cuticles. And then it needs to air dry. So just give it around 10, 20 seconds to fully dry it before you come in with your base coat. And that's now our nails all prepped and ready to go for our gel polish application. If you do have any questions on the prep process or if you're struggling, please do pop me a comment below and I will see if I can help. Moving on to the gel polish application and I'm going to be coming in with the Kiki London rubber base coat. Now the rubber base coat is designed for thin, weak, brittle or splitting nails. I have quite thin, weak nails, so I find that this works really well for me. It is slightly thicker than your regular base coat, but it's not as thick as a builder in a bottle. So it's kind of like an in-between system, I find. And I'm just going to apply a really thin layer of this to my nails. Because it is that little bit thicker, I like to really work it into the nail plate. So you'll find that I'm pushing it up towards the cuticle area and then I'm really working it as I'm moving it down the nail. 
the here you'll see I place it just before the cuticle area and push it up to the cuticle I find this way it minimizes me touching my cuticle area and then I'm really working it as I pull it down towards the free edge I like to come over it a few times just to help smooth it out and make sure that I've got a nice even application and I'm turning my brush on the side to get right around those cuticles you want to try your hardest not to get any of this on the cuticle or the skin but if you do get any of the gel products on your cuticle or your skin area just remove them with some alcohol before curing Now, even though this has a slightly thicker consistency to a regular base coat, it self levels beautifully. So I don't find that this adds any bulky layer to my nails. They're quite short, so they would look obvious if they had a bulky layer. And I know that that can sometimes put people off using a thicker consistency product. But where this self levels nice and evenly, you don't notice that you're using a thicker product. Now I have also applied this to my thumbnail but like I said it's slightly awkward working on my thumbnail on camera so all of the steps I've done I've just shown you them on my four fingernails and I've done the thumb off camera. I'm just brushing over them to make sure that's nice and even where I've moved my hand around quite a lot again it's a lot easier to do this on a client rather than yourself. I've then popped them in to cure for 60 seconds and just look how smooth these look. I'd really be happy with just a clear coat of this on my nails. But I am going to be adding some colour and I opted to use charcoal grey from the new winter 2020 collection. I really struggled picking a colour if I'm honest but I'm glad I went for this one because it is absolutely beautiful. Now what I'm going to do is apply a really thin first coat of colour. As I say in all of my videos, keep your gel polish coats nice and thin. You don't need to add too much bulk. So I'm taking a real little amount of polish on my brush. Here I picked up a little too little. So I just come in with a little bit more and I'm working that down the nail and then I come in and go around the cuticle area. I personally find it a little easier lately to start a little back from the cuticle apply it down towards the free edge and then come in at the cuticle area and get that neat cuticle line but again you're going to find different ways work better for you so I always recommend play around with your products and find what works best for you but as you can see I'm just working that up towards the cuticle area I'm letting the brush fan out and do a lot of the work for me again as I go around the cuticle here I'm letting the brush fan out by doing this, I haven't got to worry about trying to get a perfect cuticle line because the brush is going to do it naturally itself. Don't be scared to come in again if you're not happy with the application. The little finger I always find slightly trickier because we're working on such a smaller surface. And I personally find short nails a lot harder than longer ones. Now once again if you do get any product on the skin you can either wipe it off using your gloved finger like I did there or you can come in with a nail art brush and some alcohol just to remove that before curing but it is really important that you remove it before curing. With this first coat of colour we're keeping it nice and thin so we're not worrying about the coverage here. We will get that full on opaque coverage when we come in and apply our second coat. So I'm applying the second coat of colour exactly the same as that first coat, wriggling it up towards the cuticle area. You don't want to add too much product to the cuticle because it will run back and flood the cuticles. You're dragging most of that colour down towards the free edge. And then I like to come in and cap the free edge once I'm doing my second coat. You just come over it here to neaten up the application a little bit. So here I'll talk you through it a little more. I take my brush and I wriggle it up towards the cuticle rather than coming straight in and putting my brush down at the cuticle area. Then I'm letting that fan out and I'm pulling that colour down towards the free edge. Again, this is a really thin layer of colour. You don't need to have thick layers. The colours are highly pigmented. So two thin coats and you've got your full opaque coverage. I just wanted to take a moment to say I know this video might not have been as exciting as some of the nail art videos but I really wanted to share a video with you going over the prep and the basics of gel polish application because they are two really really important steps. It's all well and good being able to do fancy nail art and designs etc 
But if your prep isn't on point and your gel polish application isn't on point, then those pretty designs, they're not going to last the minimum of the two weeks that a gel polish set should last. So I highly recommend practicing Nala. I absolutely love Nala. But do make sure that you take the time to get your prep down and get your gel polish application correct. And then you'll find that those sets of nails are going to last. Now I'm just coming in and making sure the free edge is fully capped because this is my second coat of colour and I'm then going to pop these in to cure for 30 seconds. Now that we've applied that second coat of colour and that's cured, you can see that the coverage from these Kiki London colours is absolutely amazing. So it's now time to come in and top coat. So again, I'm going to be using the rubber top coats. It's very similar to the rubber base coat as in the consistency is slightly thicker, but combined with the rubber base coat, it gives you a really strong, durable set of nails. This is especially good as well if you have any clients that are quite hard on their nails. So maybe due to their job or their lifestyle, if you find that you get clients who a regular top and base doesn't work very well on them, they get chipping, etc. Give the rubber system a try and see how it works for them because I find this works a lot better for me one because my nails are quite weak and two because I am really hard on them now I'm applying a thin layer of that top coat and I like to make sure that it's nice and even and again I cap the free edge with my top coat as well and although we are only doing a simple set here the Rubber top coat is really good at encapsulating nail art. So if you're working with stamping or water decals, I always opt to use my rubber top coat because I just find it seals everything in that little bit better. And if you have done all of your prep correctly and you have applied your gel polish correctly, you should find that you get a minimum of 14 to 21 days out of your Kiki London gel polish sets. Once I have finished applying the top coat, I'm then going to pop these in my LED lamp to cure for 60 seconds. If you're using a UV lamp, you'll need to cure them for two minutes. And this is how shiny that rubber top coat looks. I absolutely love it. I was really pleased with how this color looked on my skin tone as well. I'm now going to come in and use the Kiki London cuticle oil. So this one is called Coconut Escape and it is absolutely gorgeous. I wish you could smell it because it smells absolutely amazing. And I'm just going to rub this in to my cuticles to really nourish and rehydrate them from the removal that I did earlier and the treatment that we've just done. And that, guys, is the end of the video. So I really hope you all enjoyed watching and I hope you picked up some tips and tricks and found it helpful. If you did, then please give the video a thumbs up or leave me a comment below. If you're not already subscribed, I would absolutely love it if you hit that subscribe button. And then I shall see you all again next Friday, which we will be moving on to some Valentine's designs. So take care, guys, and I shall see you all again soon. Bye bye.